again, welcome to this All Levels Yoga Practice, about an hour in length. Let's start in a comfortable seated position, and that can be a cross-legged seat or anything different that feels right to you. Settle into a bit of stillness, let the gaze turn low or close your eyes. Imagine a slack line that suddenly gets more taut and you lift up taller, taller, taller through the spine. Imagine the sides of your waistline inching in just a little bit for comfort and support, not an over squeeze at all. In fact, plenty of room here for a big full inhale. Open the mouth, nice release. Exhale, breath out. Do that again, nice full breath in. Exhale. And I invite you, if not already, to turn the palms down along your thighs as a way of grounding body, mind, into this present moment. Nittat Han says, touching deeply is an important practice. We touch with our hands, our eyes, our ears, and with our mindfulness. When we practice this way, the mind and body come into alignment. Wondering thoughts come to a stop and you are at your best. Together here, breathing in, Calm the body, breathing out, gentle smile, dwelling in the present moment. This is a wonderful moment. I invite you to take in the intention of staying with present moment, calm, smiling, present, wonderful, for this practice, how that shifting mindset can help us both as we move on the mat, as we get into the difficult things of life off of the mat. And let's open the movement today by lifting the arms up to the sky. Open your eyes, reach and look. And then an easy, gentle twist, arms down by the side, look over your right shoulder. Inhale, lift both arms up to the sky. Exhale, gentle switch over to the second side, twist. And inhale, up again. And then palms back together to the center. Again, greeting that intention for practice. As you release the hands, open the eyes if they were closed and come on over to all fours. I mentioned as we were setting up, we'll use a strap in a little bit of the work today. If you have that handy, you'll be good to go. Let's take cat and cow here. And we'll certainly move through a full range of motion in the body and postures, but with a little emphasis around bow pose today. It's a back bend. Allowing the spine here at the very start to see where's that beginning range of motion for you. Back and forth, cat and cow. Good, and then stretch on up to downward facing dog. Walk the hands a little further out in front, tuck your toes, lift your hips. Good, 
Again, the movement is good here. Pedal out the feet, shift the hips, look underneath the arms, anything that feels nice. Allowing your body the time, the space, to start to energize, come into the practice. One more breath right here. And then gently take the knees back down to the yoga mat. Lift your right arm out to the side. Twist a child's pose. Thread it under your left arm. Set your shoulder, ear, side of the face down to the mat. Reach your left arm out in front of you. As you do that, shift your right hip more towards the right side so that your body itself Still stays pretty square down to the mat. Bring the left hand back beside your face. Use it to help you up to all fours. Settle, breathe. And then as you're ready, second side. Left arm goes out to the side. Thread it under the right arm. Shoulder, ear, side of the face. Today I'm keeping my hips quite lifted so that this really does get into the shoulders, upper body, chest, upper back. Extend the right arm out in front of you. Couple of breaths. Again, pull the left hip a little back towards the left side. Otherwise, we like to kind of fall towards the right. Okay, and then right hand comes back in beside the face. Use it to help you up. And back to downward facing dog. Right into a big three-legged dog. Lift the right leg up, 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 up. Let the hips open to the side. Bend your right knee and point the knee up towards the sky. Lower the right leg down. Lift the left leg high. Up, up, up. Again, let the hip shoulders rotate just a little open to the side. Kind of playfully open there. Bend the knee. Point the left knee up towards the sky as the toes fall more towards the right side. Beautifully done. Lower it down. Bring your knees back to the ground, hands to the inside so that you can step your right foot forward into a low lunge. And walk the hands up to the front knee. Let your hips move a little down and forward in space here and lift your arms up to the sky as you're ready. Now, if you don't like that back knee down on the ground, of course you can lift it up. But we're purposely starting low here. Grounded, steady. Okay, let's take the hands back beside our foot. Kick your hips back, straighten the right leg. Flex your right foot so that the toes point up to the sky and we get a good hamstring stretch. Bit of a half split or runner's lunge here. Finally, on this first side, drift back into a bent front knee and lift your back heel, uh, back knee off of the ground. Down dog lunge, spin your left heel to the ground and walk your hands out towards that left corner of your mat. Down dog lunge. Now I'm keeping 95% of my weight in the legs, so my fingertips are just barely on the ground here but the most action that I'm doing is actually lifting and pushing back into the left leg here. Hips pretty high. And then walk it all back around to all fours. Right foot back. But let's try those three things on the second side. So hands move more towards the right, so there's room to step the left foot forward. And then we'll take the hands up to the front thighs. Gradually let the hips fall 
all a little down and forward. Hands can, of course, stay there or lift up to the sky. Just explore the range of breath, range of motion in the lunge right now. We'll lower the hands down, kick the hips back, straighten the left leg, flex the foot, toes go up towards the sky. Now, if you tend to really round in the back a lot, then this will get stuck into low back rather than into the hamstring. Think of pushing your butt back, extending your chest and head more forward. That little change might be helpful. Hands, of course, could be higher, even balanced to the waist. Rebend the front knee, pick up your back knee, spin the right heel now down to the ground and walk your fingertips as though they're trying to frame that front right corner of the mat now. As you broaden the front knee out towards the pinky toe side of the foot, lift your hips more up and back rather than forward and down. So that first lunge was more of a forward and down with the hips. Now we're lifting up and back. Okay, and then bring it all in. Low lunge, back knee down, around to all fours. And then we're going to circle the hips here, forward towards the hands and then all the way back like child's pose. Forward and all the way back, big circles. Exaggerate here three times one way. And then circle, exaggerate three times the other way. Hang back in child's pose for a moment. Knees apart, big toes together. Let the hips sit low to the heels. Let body, chest, arms, head, belly be low and heavy to the ground here. Let's transition back to downward facing dog. And then bend your knees a lot and walk forward to the front end of the mat. Hang for a moment in ragdoll pose. And then slowly roll it up to standing. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down a couple of times. And roll the shoulders forward and down. Okay, just a good over body, overall body shake out there. And then find your yoga strap or substitution for a strap. Take the arms wide. We're going to do our shoulder flossing here. And you can have this wider than your shoulders for sure. If you have tighter upper body and shoulders, then make this wider rather than more narrow. Little bend in the knees. We simply go up, around, and down to the hips. Up, around, and down. And if your yoga strap right now is imaginary, that's fine too. Simply taking this motion up and over with the arms is going to be helpful. After you get in a few flosses back and forth, then go more narrow on your strap. Pull it pretty taut and try it again. Sometimes I do this where I'm really challenging myself. That's not today. I want to make this pretty acceptable and doable for us in the range that you've chosen. Just warming up. Full circle. Okay, that's it for now. Set that strap aside. We're going to use it again in a little bit. 
Come up to the front edge of your mat. Mountain pose. Again, present moment intention. Breathe in. Breathe out. Sun salutation. Lift the arms up to the sky. Exhale, fold over. Inhale, half lift. Step back to plank. Lower flat against your yoga mat. And peel your chest up for cobra. Change to downward facing dog. And breathe here. So Any time, of course, that we use those transitions for plank, lower down, cobra, down dog, take the variations. Maybe each time is a little bit different for you that work best. It might be coming through the knees to go up and down, staying with a baby cobra or changing to a locust. I like to push through child's pose a lot before I go to down dog, that sort of thing. All right, knowing that, let's keep along. Look towards your hands, make your way forward, a step, jump or walk, half lift, forward fold, Stand, reach the arms up high, palms together, center of the chest. Go one more time, just like that. Sun salutation A. Lift the arms, exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Plank pose. Lower down. Back bend. Transition to downward facing dog. Look into the hands. Step, jump, or walk to the front end of the mat. Half lift, hands to thighs, shins, or fingertips to the floor. Fold over the legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, stand up, reach the arms high. Palms together. Center of the chest. Good, from here, right into a balance series. Lean your weight over onto your left leg and kick your right heel in towards your seat. Now this first time, take your right hand, palm down, thumb down, I probably should say, to the outside of your foot, grab hold. I want this to be about the motion and the opening in the spine. So feel free to move your body so that that left hand can touch hold to a wall if that brings a lot more steadying for you. Otherwise, just like me, I'm gonna send the left arm straight out in front, give my eyes a little something to focus on. From here, I want you to kind of lift and draw back in through the right leg, lift. Let it come back in. Do it two more times. Just kind of lift and pull in with the breath. Once more, it's like a moving Natarajasana, keeping the spine upright. And then simply lower the right leg down, mountain pose. Shift your weight over towards the second side. And then left heel. Opposite hand straight out in front. Grab hand, thumb down so the palm turns in on the outside of the foot. And if you have a picture of the front side of the body, it would look like it's not moving or changing. It's just that back leg. Lift, extend back, pull it in four times. And then we're gonna release. We're back in mountain pose. Draw both arms up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Go down to all fours. So just transition down to all fours. And lift your right leg up and back. Extend the left arm out in front. So opposite arm and leg this time. Bend the right knee. It's kind of similar to what we just did. 
but it's as if if you flex the foot, you're trying to stomp your foot to the sky. You lift and lower four times. Lift, little lower. It doesn't have to be a big movement. Lift, little lower. Really engage through the glute. Lift, little lower. And then final lift and hold. Release the hands, release the leg. We're asking and allowing low back in particular to really warm up and feel some heat here. Send the left leg and the right arm back to balance there. And then bend the left knee, flex the foot. And again, we're trying to stomp that foot up towards the sky by lifting the whole leg up, a little down, up, Little down, two more times. Up, little down, and up, little down. Lower the hand, lower the knee. Shift your right foot forward into our good old regular low lunge. Pick up the back knee, and take the right hand high for revolved lunge. Lower the right hand down for a moment, find your balance, and then walk both hands up to the front thigh. Now keeping the chest down and forward, that strong tilt of the hips, so you're pressing your butt back, head forward, take it into our twist, palms together, left elbow towards the right side. It can stay hovering or locked to the outside of the thigh. Now if you have your elbow locked across, really press your belly, into the thigh, so no lighter space there. And that helps really to protect the spine as you create the slight turn and rotation. On an inhale, release the twist, set the hands down, step all the way backwards to downward facing dog. And then step the left foot forward. Of course, take your time, get your full stride there. Front knee over the line of the ankle, all the good stuff. We'll keep the right hand down, lift the left arm up. So we go into that revolved lunge first. And this is first because then the next twist is progressive, which means you could always repeat the first thing. Four. Most of us ready for that progression, walk your hands up to the front thigh. Still, belly down and forward, head forward, hips way pressing towards the back edge of the mat. And then right elbow hovers or locks to the outside of the thigh, palms together. Tone and turn the abdomen. This of course could be done with the back knee down you need the stability and the balance to best execute your posture, do that. It's always what's working in this practice this day, present moment. And let's untwist it, step it all the way back again, downward facing dog. Come forward to plank pose, lie flat down onto your belly. Bend both knees, take the in, uh, inner edges of the feet together, but the knees are gonna stay wide apart. And then reach your hands back. Again, the thumbs can be turned down towards the floor, the palms in towards each other, just like you would hold on to your legs in bow pose. And we'll lift everything that we can up. We're not holding on to the feet. The inner edges of the feet press in to give you that security. So coming up, bow pose from that strengthening position first and foremost. Lift, lift, lift. Ooh, if everything's starting to shake a little bit, you're doing it right. Lower it down. Press back to child's pose. This time. Try the knees closer together. 
So when I do knees close together, I've got my forehead a pretty good distance off of the mat with just forearms resting down, a little more controlled and steady. Okay, roll the sit upright, knees together, sit back on the heels. Of course, you could be kneeling or in a different position as is best for you. Nice, easy twist. Just look out over the right shoulder. I always like this good reset here. And then across the middle, over to the second side. Come back into the center. We'll change all the way back up to standing. And as you stand, we're going to pick up our handy yoga straps again. Now for ease, I am not going to make a belt loop here. I'm just going to keep it open because I think that's easiest for all of us to kind of go along, get along with this. So I'm just going to have hands holding the strap, but it's behind my back. Try it out. And then again, your whole body, especially if you're a little more wobbly and balanced, you might want to be really close to a wall here. And we're going to slip the right foot into the strap. And then the hands start to work back up towards the sky. Move myself away from the wall so that that's maybe a little easier to figure out. But it is a little creativity here when you're working with the yoga straps. I just looped my right leg in, taking the arms out and around, elbows up to the sky, hands overhead. Okay, and then we're doing similar work here where we're trying to lift the right leg higher, set it down, and I'm using the hands to go a little straighter, arms to go a little straighter, and then more bent. Do this in your own time, so if you need to watch a little bit, figure it out, and then try it out. About four times here on the right side, and then safely get your weight out. Always take that breath in between, mountain pose, and then set it up and start on the second side. If the strap bit isn't working for you, you go back and hold on to the hands like we did before in that version of Natarajasana. Now with the elbows pointed straight up, you want the left knee on the second side here to stay moving straight down towards the ground. Don't let it come out to the side. There's the option you like that one arm out for more stability and balance or to hold on to something. So hold on to both ends of the strap and the one hand. So if we try about four lifts. Ooh, that's rocky for me. Bring it back, steady, present moment each time. When you are done, again, set that strap down by the side. Welcome yourself into mountain pose and lift the arms up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Half lift. Step back to plank. Lower knees, chest, chin. So if you keep toes, knees, chest, and chin, that little grasshopper position with the hips lifted, and then glide it into cobra. Press hands down, feet down, lift through the chest. Elbows right into your side here. Lower it all the way, flat down against your mat. So friends, here is our first bow pose, holding onto the feet, bend both knees, Reach your hands back, grip high, closer to your toes than the ankles. Try to have your knees hip distance apart. 
And if your hands, both at the same time, are not finding your feet, I want you to go one side at a time because we're gonna do this twice. Usually it's pretty doable. All right, here we go. Let's lift up. Big chest forward, knees straight back, spread your toes. And lower down, release the legs, create a pillow with your hands to lay your forehead into. And really heavy breath out. One more time. Again, if you were doing one side at a time, here's your opportunity to switch sides. Otherwise, this time, grab hold close to those toes and then see about walking the hands down closer to your ankles. Still spread the toes and press back through the legs to lift the chest. So I'm always thinking knees extend to the back of the mat so that the chest can extend to the front of the mat. Maybe a little bit of a rock, just like a boat here. As you stay in that lifted bow pose, you've got this. And release, release, release. Go back, hands make a pillow for your forehead. This time, we'll rock the hips a little bit from side to side to release it out. Make your way to all fours and all the way to downward facing dog. Okay, lift your right leg high into the sky, three-legged dog. And step the foot all the way forward into your low lunge. Warrior two, spin your back heel down. Lift your torso and extend the arms in either direction. Gaze out over your front fingertips. Keep sitting low, low, low into your front thigh as you broaden it towards the pinky toe side of the foot. And that sort of wrenching down into the front thigh can only happen with a strong, stable back leg. You want to think thigh back so that the front sit bone can come down and underneath you. Flip your palms, reverse warrior, lift the right hand high, look up. Now, left hand, I like to take it on my back thigh so that I can push my weight into the back hand a little bit more for support. And it gets that long reach with the back bend. Side angle pose, change it elbow to knee, left arm either up to the sky. It's okay for the rotation in your shoulder. You're gonna take palm down and all the way overhead. Look to the side or even up here in your side angle pose. So try to keep chest open, hips open to the side edge of your mat. Excellent work. Come back to warrior two. And just straighten your legs and flip your toes so that we're towards the second direction. Bend your left knee, warrior two. Gaze out over the fingertips. You can challenge yourself to sit a little lower, a little lower. Still pull your spine nice and tall. Excellent work. Turn the palms, lift the left hand high. Right hand can surely just be down by your side. With that extra bit, I like to take the hand to the back thigh so that I can really lean into it. Keep descending through the front thigh. And change to your side angle pose, left elbow to the knee. Again, right hand can start, palm open up to the sky. That helps to get the shoulders, chest, hips all open. And then that stays with you and we just flip, palm down and reach the arm overhead. 
feel out that extra bit of reach. Excellent work, yogis. Come back to warrior two. Straighten the left leg. Turn your feet parallel to one another. We'll go hands to the waistline. Send your torso long and forward, and then hands straight down under the line of the shoulders. One more breath with this extension and long spine. And then walk your hands more towards the line of your heels and send your head more down towards the ground. As always, lean your weight more forward in the toes here, especially if you've got the legs really straight and firm. Bring your hands back to your waist. Press down into your feet and come all the way upright. Heel toe, heel toe the feet into the center. Give it a little bit of a shake. Great, we're gonna do one more trick with our yoga strap. And it starts down in all fours. Now, straps can be handy variations to, uh, and today I'm using it to really open up and see where we can strengthen our poses. So I'm going to take the strap under just the right leg, but I do know that especially translating on video, it can be a little bit tricky to see where is everything going. I'm kneeling and then I've worked the strap underneath my right foot. And similar to what we did standing, except I gotta get myself down to all fours, I'm wearing my strap kind of over one shoulder, I'm hoping your strap or what you're working with is long enough for this. And it's like a same arm and leg lift. <clears throat> Stretch the right arm forward as the right leg lifts up. Lots of balance and control work teaches us a lot about how we're engaging, where we're engaging the core. And the way that I work this is to slowly take my hand closer to the foot, play around with it. Be careful, be safe enough as you do so. Is your leg right leg, leg and right arm? Right arm, right leg. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Same arm and leg. We're doing some of those little pulses here. And then you'll come down and switch sides. If that is just too much or not working for you, you can do what we would typically do here is hold your foot with your hand. Strap just brings a little different element. For me, it's more balance ask. Try to keep the strap along the front of the foot. And again, same arm and leg as you switch left arm, left. way that I make this more intense is to keep cinching the hand closer to the foot on the strap and still trying to extend the arm straight towards the front end of the mat as the foot lifts up towards the sky. Release, perhaps 
happy that I won't do anything funky else with the strap. That was a lot today. Put it out to the side and stretch yourself into downward facing dog. On our June theme or mantra, still practicing. It helps to do something a little creative or different from time to time to keep that fire ignited. Here, go back to what we know, downward facing dog for a moment. And then come forward to plank and lie flat down onto your belly. Sphinx pose, prop up to your forearms. Do you want your elbows right underneath the line of your shoulders? Cool. Friends, two things here. Take your feet about as wide as your mat and let your back hang kind of heavy, if you will, the weight of the body heavy down to the mat. And look just past your fingertips. So this is our first option. It's more of our yen sphinx pose. If body, mind need just that restful position, you're going to stay right here. For those staying with me in this active portion, it's feet more hip width apart. Bend the right knee so your heel comes in again. Now, frog pose. We've been doing all of the work with our hand, palm down, thumb down. We're gonna flip that instead. Palm open, thumb up to the sky on the big toe side. Instead of pushing your foot back, you're trying to pull your foot in towards your hip for more of a quad stretch. Turn your fingers down, elbow up to the sky. If possible, also look back forward so that your shoulder is square again to the front of the mat in this half frog pose. It's a quad stretch with the back bend. A slow release out of the first side. And again, if you're in your yen sphinx, you're right there, you're still there. Lots of benefit coming to you. Half frog pose, switch. Right arm stays as is now. It's the left hand reaching back, trying to turn thumb up to the sky, big toe side of the foot. And the shoulders can open, you can look back. Thigh lift off of the ground a little bit. And then as you rotate deeper into the posture, the thigh goes more down against the mat. Fingers turn forward, elbow up to the sky, shoulders, hips square. I like to roll off to my opposite free side as I release there. And then we're all back to that sphinx pose again. Feet as wide as the mat if you weren't already with a heavy hang of belly, hips into the mat. Last belly down ask here. One more bow pose. Bend both knees, reach the hands. You've got several options. We started by not holding the feet. You could go for that one again. Maybe hold towards the toes, towards the ankles. Final option, if you're holding to your ankles, flex the feet. And like you just did in frog pose, keep your thighs more down to the floor. But again, send your heels away from your seat. Send the knees towards the back of the mat as you send your chest lifted and towards the front of the mat. Release, release, release. Child's pose. Heavy 
deep breaths. I love those noisy exhales. They really help to bring us and keep us present. Feel free to let it go. Ha. <sighs> Okay, and then as you're ready, we're going to lie all the way down onto our back, pull the knees into the chest. So it's like child's pose, but lying down on our back, knees to chest. Anytime I get into these deep back bending practices, I simultaneously can't wait for class to be over and think, oh, I really need like three hours to find where I can go with this. We'll stick to the one hour today. Soles of the feet down to the mat here, friends. Bridge pose, press the back of your head, shoulders, feet down and lift your hips up. Interlace your hands underneath you and roll the shoulders more up and into the middle. Of course, if this interlace of the fingers doesn't feel right for you, too tight, hold on to the outer edges of your yoga mat instead and you simulate the same work and actions. All that work with the strap was getting us to find strength and stability across back body to be available for this opening so use it here, squeeze the glutes and lift the thighs really high. And then release the hands and lower your hips down. Pause for a moment. Two more back bends, my friends. You can repeat that same bridge pose for the second back bend, or you can take the hands by your ears for Urdhva Dhanurasana. If you're not so familiar with Urdhva Dhanurasana, skip it for today and stay with bridge pose that we just did for your second time around. If the body is ready for a rest right now, you're going to stay butt down, knees together, feet apart for the second round. Okay, so we all have our misses. Here we go. Second round, staying low, going to bridge or the Dhanurasana. Urdhva Dhanurasana places the hands at the ears with the fingers towards turned in towards the shoulders. You should be able to see your elbows and your peripheral vision the whole way as you go to the top of the head and then to straighter arms. I like heels up to get myself into my best position and then press the heels back down. Everyone, safely greet your way back down to your yoga mat. <sighs> Breathe it out. And I did mention three belly up back bends here in total. So we did bridge pose. We did our second round. For the third round, friends, I would love for you to take a gentle, supported bridge pose. That first supported option is much more like legs up the wall. You probably have an imaginary wall like me. You're just leaving hips down, feet straight up to the sky. Another option, if you do have your yoga blocks nearby, I didn't mention getting them out, is that you could take your bridge pose and place a block underneath the sacrum. The third option that might be available to some right now because we've worked all through class to create 
that expansiveness in the spine is to take the hands at your sacrum as the hold and support. It's like I'm doing here. I've got forearm, upper arm bones, I apologize, upper arm bones down, elbows down. I've got my hands propped around the waist for the support. So again, take any of those three options. It should feel like a pose you can kind of hang out with a little bit. The supported option, even if available in the spine, might be a lot in the wrist for most folks. So be good to yourself. And then whichever of those three options you chose, come on back down and again, pull the knees into the chest, squeeze it. Rock a bit from side to side. Woo! So much there. Let's paint some circles on the ceiling with the knees. It should help you circle around the sacrum. That's that upside down triangular bone. It's fused and meets low back down to tailbone. If you're doing those knee circles, go in the opposite direction as well. And then I like to do the little rowboat, hands to the knees. Sending the knees out and around in circles, both directions as well. Roll yourself up to a seated position just for a few last seated stretches here. Legs straight out in front, lift up and over. Now I like to come into a gentle rounded spine here after all of that back bend work. Just try to make it a nice even rounding. Meaning don't drop just the head and shoulders. Take it from the hips. And then a good external rotation in the hips. So soles of the feet together, knees out to the side. Stay upright here in Baddha Konasana. Press the feet in, extend the knees out. From there, I'm going to shift just right into a seated position with the feet underneath the line of the knees. Maybe fold over, get that extra little release through outer hip. And then yogis, if there's any last bits of movement that would feel good to you, I invite you to add it in here. And when you are ready, then settle into your still position. You could stay in a seated position or of course lie down for your Shavasana. you dial down into your stillness, come back to that opening meditation, come present moment. Follow along or tune it out. Breathing in, I calm my body. This is like drinking a glass of cool water. Feel it Feel the freshness permeate your body. Breathing out, I smile. One smile can relax hundreds of muscles in your face and make you master of yourself. Dwelling in the present moment, 
recite this line and breathe in again. Think of nothing else. Know exactly where you are. As you breathe out, say to yourself, I know this is a wonderful moment to be truly here now and to enjoy the present moment is our most important task. Calming, smiling, present moment, wonderful moment. It can be hard to feel this. Sometimes repeating helps. Sometimes shortening to what most suits you is best. Perhaps it's just a breath in and out, calming. Present moment. Calming. Present moment. silence for one more minute before I pull us back together. Slowly give a little movement to the fingers and the toes. If you're lying back, take your time to come back to a seated position. And everyone in that seat, palms together, thumbs to your sternum. In this closing gesture of Anjali Mudra, Allowing us to send our present moment intention out into the rest of our day. Hopefully refreshed, energized to take on what comes our way. And we'll help that transition forward through the sound of Om. You're welcome to sing along, to listen, or to tune out here. Empty the breath. Take a deep breath in. Ah. I bow in full gratitude to you, each other, this practice. Thank you. Keep practicing.